Welcome to Math with Mrs. Cox. We are on page 157 in your math book. This is the first lesson in chapter three. This chapter three is talking about division. Let's begin. A fact family is a group of related facts that use the same numbers. You can use fact families to re relate multiplication and division. This is also very important that you're comfortable with your multiplication times tables. If not, pull out your times table chart and do not use your calculator, it will be taken away for the week. Let's begin. Cheryl is helping to put away 18 basketballs. After practice, she places them on a rack that has three shelves. How many basketballs can she put on each shelf? If you remember these from third grade, these are fact families. So we know here's 18 and three, the number we're missing is six. Here's six and 18, the number we're missing is three. So we know that since this is the multiplication, the opposite must be true too. 18 divided by six is three. 18 divided by three is six. Understanding your multiplication will greatly help you on this chapter. So 18 divided by three is six. Cheryl can put six basketballs on each shelf. And here they want to have you draw this. And what this just needs to look like is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have three shelves, one, two, three. And there are six basketballs in each shelf. So three times six is 18. All right, that was one page 50, 157. Let's go to 158. An equation, this is a vocabulary word. An equation is a number sentence that contains an equal sign. You can use the related facts to help you find the unknown or the missing value. In an equation, you can use a variable or a letter to help represent the unknown number. Example two, Ellie is creating gift bags for her party guests. She wants to divide 56 pencils equally among seven gifts. How many pencils will go in each bag? Well, let's represent, represent P as pencils and figure out what we need to do. So we have 56 divided into seven bags. And then the opposite in the fact family, well, I know for sure that seven times eight is 56. So I know that 56 divided by seven is going to be eight and P is going to be eight. So Ellie will put eight pencils into each bag. Guided practice, complete the fact family. Nine, eight times nine is 72. So then nine times eight is 72, which means I can put the answer here, 72 divided by eight is nine. 72 divided by nine is eight. Then I can add right here, 72 and eight, nine. Divide, use a related multiplication fact. All right, let's think about this for a second. Something times six equals 48. Yep, so eight times six. Right here, use a related multiplication fact. 40 divided by five is eight. Think five times eight equals 40. Nine. Write a fact family for each set. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five rows. And in each row we have one, two, three. So then we can write the opposite. Three times five equals 15. Then we can do a division. So 15 divided by three equals five. And, and then 15 divided by five equals three. Okay, right here for this one, we have two and each one we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight blocks times the two categories equals 16. Then we can flip it and do two times eight equals 16. Then we can flip it again and just do it completely backwards. 16 divided by two equals eight. 16 divided by eight equals two. You following the pattern here? All right, here we go. 
We have the same four, four and nine and 36. So we're gonna do four times nine equals 36. Nine times four equals 36. Then we just flip it again, 36 divided by nine equals four. 36 divided by four equals nine. Easy peasy, right? Let's do the next fact, family. Five, seven, and 35. Five times seven equals 35. Seven times five equals 35. You could probably turn the video off and do this faster than what I'm doing. But just double check you're getting the right answers, okay? 35 divided by five equals seven. 35 divided by seven equals five. All right, now we're gonna work on this fact family over here. Three and eight and 24. So we're gonna do three times eight equals 24. Eight times three equals 24. Are you beating me as you're writing this down? Let's have erase the teacher to see. Let's see, teacher can't write and talk at the same time because then the wrong things come out of her pencil. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Oh, 24 divided by three equals eight. 24 divided by eight equals three. Okay, make sure I got all of everything written correctly here. Divide, write the related multiplication fact. 64 divided by eight, well if I look on the eights category on my multiplication chart, I know that eight times eight is 64. So eight times eight is 64. 45, I go down and then look up, it's in the nines category. You can go to five times. Five times nine is 45. And then 11, we have something times nine or something divided by nine equals nine. And I know from my doubles multiplication, that's my answer I'm looking for. Okay, number 12, we have 32 divided by eight equals four because four times eight is 32. Let me look at this one. Eight is 40 divided by something equals eight. Very good. 63 divided by something is seven. So I look down the sentence category till I find 63. I'm gonna see that beautiful number is gonna be my other piece of the pie that I'm missing. Algebra, find the unknown, which is the blank, number in each equation. Use a related division fact. So we have two times something equals 12. So then I can just flip it around and do 12 divided by two equals six. So M equals six. 8 times something equals 24. So then I can just do the opposite. 24 divided by 8 equals 3. So y must be 3. Algebra here. 9 times g equals 72. Well, I can do the opposite. 72 divided by 9, and I am familiar with that and know that it's going to be 8. So g must be 8, my unknown. All right, join me on page 160, please. Number 18, orange blossoms have five petals and are some of the most fragrant flowers. How many petals would there be in a group of seven flowers? Okay, so you have five times seven and that equals 35 petals. Okay, how many petals, that's our unknown, would there be in a group of 11 flowers? Write an equation to find the unknown. Then find the unknown. So they just want you to make a fancy math problem. So what they're asking is that we do know that there are five petals, okay? So we're gonna go five times and there's, 11, there's a group of 11 flowers, 11. And then we're gonna say the unknown is P, right? So what is five times 11? P equals what? Very good, 55. Make sure you write your fives a little bit neater than I do. A group of flowers, we're gonna see the unknown is F, has 40 petals in all. Write an equation to find the unknown. Then find the unknown. So we have 40 petals in all, right? And we know that there are five petals in each flower. So then we're gonna divide that by the five and that's gonna equal F. 
And if we do the equation, we know that 40 divided by 5 is 8. I forgot to write the pedals up here. Got to make sure I get that all taken care of so I don't have to pay someone to find my mistake. All right, brain builders. Can the number 12 be a part of more than one fact family? Explain and give an example. Make a general statement about fact families that applies to all numbers. Well, yeah, it can be a part of more than one fact family. Um, and the reason is like four times three equals 12, right? And then we also have, what's another fact? Let's see, we have six times two equals 12, right? Numbers are part of fact families, even if one of the factors is the number or they're in the product. So I, just, just to say numbers a, are a part of fact families. If they are one of the factors. of the number. Ooh. Almost ran out of room. Ooh, that was little. Okay, number 22. Which does one, which one does not belong? Circle the equation that does not belong to the other three. Explain why it does not belong. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. We have 54, 54, and 54. Oh, that one doesn't have it. I'm gonna put a little star on this one, I need to look at it. There's a nine, a nine, a nine, a nine, and a six, six, no six. Okay, this one is division, division, that's true, and multiplication. So I'm actually missing another multiplication. So I'm going to say this one does not belong. And get it is not a part of a fact family. It is not a part of a fact family. All right, how do multiplication facts help me divide? Well, you can use multiplication fact to divide. So we can say um, multiplication is the opposite of division. Of course my dogs are barking. Anybody want a free dog? All right, there we go. That's the end of our um, guided practice. Join me on the homework.